quick second. Welcome. Thank you for being here at Sunday Services. We made it through Christmas? All right. Well, thank you for being here this morning. If this is your first time, uh, we'd love for you to fill out a connect card so we know you're here worshiping with us uh, this morning. If anyone has a prayer request, use these cards for that purpose. You can fill this out during the service with the pins and the seats uh, and then drop it in our offering bucket. We're going to pass a little bit later in the service or take it to our information desk out in the middle atrium on your way out. Uh, today. A couple quick announcements I have. First, the pop-up uh, sale we have out in the atrium for uh, coffee and coffee mugs and travel mugs and all that uh, ends today. So be sure to stop by on your way out. All the proceeds for that uh, are going to get our uh, Kenya Africa mission trip team 2020 over there next summer. All the proceeds from that sale are going to support that team. Today's also the last day for the uh, silent auction on that big Arctic cooler with all the coffee and mugs inside it as well. So go in place a bit if you want. Be sure to stop on your way out. Uh, Financial Peace University. Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University is starting in January. We're going to run it on Tuesday nights here at the church for nine weeks in a row. If you want to be a part of that, there's details in your bulletin. Uh, registration for that is completely online. Go to hopechristianchurch.com, the events page. You'll find the registration link uh, on that page. Uh, we are in need of some volunteers uh, in one specific area. We have communion here every single week, and that takes prep work. It takes filling up all those little cups. It takes uh, prep work to uh, just pass it down the aisles. We have volunteers that just uh, bring it down and serve it uh, to us as a body every week. So. We need volunteers in all those areas. If you can help either serve during the service and help distribute the elements, or if you can come early and actually prep them uh, as well, uh, please sign up at the information desk. There's sign-up sheets for both of those opportunities. Okay, that's all I have. So let's stand back up, say hi to somebody. Tell them if you're still eating Christmas cookies.
this moment to reflect on this past year, 2019, and all that God has done for us, all that God has done for you and your personal walk with him and your household and those that you know. I just want to reflect on the faithfulness of God right now. Thank you for an amazing year of connecting people to Jesus. God, we thank you for how you've taken us deeper, how you spoke to us through your word. God, we thank you for the teachings, the lessons we learned, and how close we are with you, God. We want to say thanks. We want to worship you through these songs as a way to say thanks. God, we are excited for 2020 and it's gonna be an amazing year, but God, we can't go into that year without stopping and praising you for how great you are. God, we thank you for never leaving us. God, we thank you that your presence is always with us. Thank you for the continued reminder that the cross is our hope of salvation. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this church, God, that we can worship you freely. And may we never take that for granted. May we never take this space for granted. But God, may we use it always to connect people to Jesus turn it to reflect on you as worship God. Everything we do for you is worship God. We sing great great are you Lord Come on, sing that one more time. It's your breath in our
God, our Heavenly Father, it's good to be in your house today. Father, humble our hearts right now as we worship you, as we pray, as we sing songs, as we take communion together. Father, as we hear your word preached, may this hour of worship be honoring to you. We're thankful for Jesus Christ this morning. We pray everything in his name. Amen. Please go ahead and have your seats. So earlier this week, I was at a coffee shop, and I don't know if you've seen in coffee shops where they have two tip jars out, and each tip jar is labeled with an opposing idea, and you're supposed to tip in the one that you support, like, you know, Ohio State and Michigan, and then your money goes in the one that uh, you would vote for. I saw one this week that had to do with New Year's resolutions. Uh, The first one said, New Year, New Me, and the other one said, No Way, I'm Perfect. It got me thinking about New Year's resolutions and that that ritual we have every year that we celebrate just because the earth made it around the sun one more time. I started thinking about what resolutions are and what they mean in the life of a Christian. As I was thinking about even this time together, uh, the correlation between a resolution, when we make a resolution, we look back on the previous year, And we examine it, but we also are looking forward to the next year. We look back and we also look forward. And when we come around the table at communion, we're doing the same thing. We're looking back at what Jesus Christ did for us. But we're also looking forward to the future about what Jesus Christ is going to do for us. You know, as David said, we're, we're excited God, for what you're going to do in the next year. As I look back in 2016, I got to preach a little bit more, and uh, one of the chapters I preached on was Philippians 3, and I want to read that section uh, one more time. It's not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You see, as Christians, uh, Colossians tells us that we are putting on Christ. We put off the old self and put on the new self, Jesus Christ. Making a resolution isn't a one time of year thing, making a resolution is a daily thing. Sometimes it's a moment by moment thing. When we gather around the, the, the table here for communion, we're making a resolution. We're saying, Christ has made me his own. And now I'm going to strive to be like Christ when we're in our prayer closets or we're at our study desk, deep in the word, we're making resolutions. When we repent, we're making resolutions. We look back and say, yeah, maybe I screwed up this year. This year didn't go quite as how I wanted it to. I have some regret. And that's where grace comes in. We don't have to live in our regret. We don't have to convince God that we're gonna do good enough next year, that you'll love me more. God so loved the world that he sent his only son while we were still sinners. But as Paul says, Christ has now made us his own. And now we push forward and we strive for the upward call that's in Christ Jesus. Yeah, we make resolutions. Not once a year though, moment by moment. 
Our servers are gonna come forward and as we share communion together, maybe there's a line in the sand that you need to draw and you, you're ignoring it. Maybe you just need to meditate a little today on God's grace. I know that he loves you so much, he sent his son for you. The bread this morning represents the body of Christ and the blood is represented by the juice. Take it on your own time. If you're not a faithful follower in Jesus Christ yet, you're not obligated to participate. There's no pressure on you. You can let the trace pass. But if you do participate, there's a place for the cup when you're done with it in the seat in front of you. After a moment of reflection, we will uh, pass our offering buckets this morning. You can put your connect cards in those buckets and then I'll come and close this time in prayer. Pray with me one more time. God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for another day of life. We give back our, our prayers and our songs and our breath. We give back uh, financially, Father, from what you've given to us. Bless our time now, our, our focus, the meditation of our hearts. Uh, prepare our hearts now to hear your word and uh, to spring into action from your truth. It's in Christ's wonderful name that we pray everything this morning. Amen.
Well, hello. Welcome to Hope Christian Church. I'm Chad. If you don't know me, I pastor students at Hope. That's our student ministry here, 6th through 12th grade. And I'm going to tell you to start off what I tell them every week, that we came here together today to think about God and that he created us to live a creative life that expresses who he is. So we connect people to Jesus through that, right? That's what we do, Hope Christian Church in Avon, Ohio in 2019, almost 2020. Happy New Year. We connect people to Jesus. But we know that we're not just thinking about God right now. We go out from this place. We go from this location scattered to love people, to serve people, to be Jesus people, right, in the community, and to invite others to the party, to invite others to following Jesus, to listening to Jesus with us. And so that's the title of our message today, Listen to What I Say, not me, but Jesus, all right? Let's listen to what Jesus says. You know to keep a relationship from being strained, to keep the fire alive in a friendship, a marriage, whatever, you listen, 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 listen. And then you woo, or you wow, right? Hopefully many of us did that over the season of giving and on Christmas Day. And it's the same with Jesus, right? We put in the effort to understand the people we love, their likes and their dislikes, and what makes them tick. And we learn to anticipate and do things before they even ask or expect, right? And so we should not be surprised when we're told in John 14, 15, when Jesus talks to his followers then, when he says, if you love me, keep my commands. If you love me, keep my commands. If you've truly fallen in love with me, put in the effort to understand me, to know me, to listen to me, to follow me. Do you hear that? We're going to be mostly in Jeremiah today, so if you have your Bible, the Bible app, go ahead and go to Jeremiah chapter 6. I know, we're going way back today. (laughs) You'll see most of the scriptures on the screen if you don't have a Bible, so that's totally okay. Jeremiah 6, verse 10, and Jeremiah was possibly the youngest prophet ever called by God. He was called at a very young age to be the prophet to not just the Hebrews at the time in Israel, but to the nations to all people. So he had a huge responsibility to calling people to follow God. And for Israel in the book of Jeremiah, this was definitely not happening. His call, his whole life, was to speak God's message to a people that would never listen to him, but to remain steadfast, to persistently give this message. And if he was even the only one to ever listen to God and follow God, then that's how it was going to be. And We have God speaking to Jeremiah here in Jeremiah 6, verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears are uncircumcised. They can't listen. Behold, the word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. They take no pleasure in it. Are you like me? Did you grow up hearing the term selective hearing? Anybody, yeah? Or maybe you're parenting your child that way and you're, you're saying that a lot. <laughs> I grew up hearing, son, you have selective hearing and that needs to change. I knew exactly when pizza was coming to the house. I knew exactly when I was going to a Cavs game. I didn't really know when laundry was supposed to be done or most of my homework or taking out the trash, anything that was fit that category really. I just tuned my dad out to that. And so we have God pretty much saying that to his children here. Or even worse than that, you guys aren't listening to me at all. God is calling to his loved ones, and they're not hearing it. They've established new patterns and habits that have led to abandoning him and his way. And so they're disorganized, and they're undisciplined, and they've chosen other paths to try and satisfy their own desires, to pursue purpose and meaning in life when he's already given it to them. In fact, he tells Jeremiah or reminds Jeremiah about this ancient path that's always been for people to follow him. And Mike Cosper talks about it. I'm going to quote him, and he's also going to quote Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 as our next scripture. He says, the prophet Jeremiah calls us to consider an ancient path. And when he spoke those words, Israel had abandoned their God, and Jeremiah was inviting them to come home. 
Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look. Do you see it? And ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. Let's continue to verse 19 with their response. But they said, we will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you saying, pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not pay attention. Therefore, hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what will happen to them. Hear, O earth, everybody now. Behold, I am bringing disaster upon this people, comma, the fruit of their own devices. God is not going to come up with a new way to bring disaster on this people. He says they're bringing it upon themselves. They're not listening to me, so they're going to go their own way. It's going to be fruitless, and they're going to receive evil habits without following me. Behold, I am bringing disaster upon this people, the fruit of their own devices or schemes, because they have not paid attention to my words, and as for my law, they have rejected it. And so God is pleading as a parent to his children, the path I've already given you and set before you is where the good way is. And as they ignore and abandon this call to this path, and they neglect to fear God, And they plot out their own way. He says, well, they can have those paths. And they'll end up with the fruit of their own devices. And it's rotten fruit. It's not the fruitful ministry and life that they could have where the good way is. Do you hear it? There's this viral video that came out in November with Nick Foles. Maybe you've seen it. And maybe you remember Nick Foles. He was 30 years old. And everybody thought he was washed up already (laughs) in the NFL as a backup quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And then he went to the Super Bowl, right? Their starting quarterback went down with an injury. He took them through the rest of the playoffs, and he actually beat Tom Brady and the Patriots in the Super Bowl. was actually the Super Bowl MVP and hoisted the Lombardi Trophy as a backup quarterback to start the year that year. And then this offseason, he got paid the big bucks. Everybody thought, oh, he's not washed up anymore. Let's go get him. So the Jacksonville Jaguars acquire him, pay him a lot of money to be their starting quarterback. And this season, right at the beginning of the season, he gets his own almost season-ending injury. And so what what happens in this video is there's a journalist that asks him, as a man of faith, how are you handling all this? We know you're a Christian guy, but you love football. Your passion is football. You want to be out there, but you're pretty much out for the whole season. And this sixth-round quarterback who nobody knows, named Gardner of all people, has replaced you. How do you feel about this? How are you navigating all this? So I want you to see how he's handling his path here. Let's check this out. You know, right when, this, right when I felt this thing break and I was going into the locker room, I just realized, you know, as well as God, this wasn't exactly what I was thinking when I came to Jacksonville. Obviously, you come here and you want to create a culture and impact people. But at the end of the day, as I got, this is the journey you want me to go on. I'm going to glorify you in every action, um, good or bad. And, you know, I still could have joy in an injury. Um, and that, that's people hear that and say, that's crazy. But it's like when you believe in Jesus and you, you go out there and you play and that's that changes your heart. And you only understand it when, you know, that purpose in your life, just like when I hoisted the Lombardi Trophy. The reason I'm smiling is my faith was in Christ. In that moment, I realized I didn't need that trophy to define who I was because it was already in Christ. And that's my message when I play. Same thing happens when I get injured. We tend to make this so much about us as human beings. We tend to make it about us as athletes. It's not about us. It really isn't. If you make it about yourself, you're probably going to go home at night, lay your head on your pillow, and be very alone and very sad. And then hopefully someday you can find that purpose in your life because my purpose isn't football, it's impacting people. And I, my, my ministry happens to be the locker room. And I've been able still to get to know people, get to know these guys through an injury. Though I might not be playing, that is difficult from a fleshly perspective. But from the spiritual perspective, from my heart, I've been able to grow as a human being to where I feel like I'm at a better situation here as a person than I was before because of the trial I just went under. And I know that's a sermon in itself, but... That's how I go through life, and the good Lord's been there to, you know, it's not always about prosperity. I don't believe in the prosperity gospel. I believe if you read the word of God and you understand it, there's trials along the way, but they equip your heart to be who you are. 
So we tend to make this life so much about ourselves as human beings, he says. Ties right to what Jeremiah is talking about. You and I are much, not much different today, right? We find our own ways. We circumvent God's direction or the good way is. We tend to make this so much about ourselves, especially, I'm sure, in that culture. As an NFL player that, you know, you've gotten to this point where you're at the peak of celebrity and luxury and all the relationships you think you could ever want around you. So many devices thrown into your face that I can only imagine. And Nick has chosen a good way. Football just happens to be on this path where many have taken the path of professional football for professional football's sake. He's chosen a good way to impact people by the grace of God, he said. That's what he's going to live on mission for. At least he's going to try, he says, where he's finding himself. And football just happens to be something he's skilled at. He enjoys playing. It's not everything to him. And he wants to teach others that. And it has impacted people. It's impacted people whom you and I may never be in contact with, have the opportunity to be in contact with. Because the ministry that he gets to have is in the locker room, he said. With NFL players that, like I said, are just at the peak of all celebrity. And he's there. He's living in their world, but he's bringing a new way, a new path to present to them. He impacted Jalen Ramsey. Look at Jalen Ramsey's tweet after this media presser. He shares this video and says, some of the best talks in my life were with Nick, even in a short time together. Always keep God first and everything will work out according to his plan. We're usually what we talked about. That's a God-fearing man right there. We are extremely blessed children of God through it all. I'm not telling you to go run out of here and make Jalen Ramsey your social media pastor. Um, He is known as one of the biggest divas in the NFL and one of the more locker room cancers in the NFL. He says, I only had a short time with Nick because he ran himself out of Jacksonville this year to play for LA. But I find it really interesting that he's taking the time after he saw this video to post it to his social world And share, there is something so different about this guy and his steadfastness to the the path that he believes he's on, following after God. And I think there's something about that that I want in my life, too. And he's a God-fearing man, and I want everybody to know it. I made much less of my short time with Jalen Ramsey. Somehow, someway, I found myself on the Pro Bowl field in 2018's Pro Bowl to go interview Joe Schobert and pretty much whoever else I wanted. And I get on the Pro Bowl field in Orlando, Florida, and they let the media personnel go, and I thought I was going to have to swim move people to get to our, uh, the Browns' only Pro Bowler that year, Joe Schobert, but I don't think anybody knew who he was, because I was the only one to go up to him <laughs> and interview him. And then I had way more time to talk to everybody else. Antonio Brown's by me, Von Miller's by me, Kareem Hunt, all these guys, and I see Jalen Ramsey get a an open second, so I run up to him because I've got to tie this thing to Cleveland sports, and I saw on Instagram the day before that he shared about LeBron James being a mentor to him, and he gave him a big shout out, and um, I wanted to talk to him about LeBron a little bit and the Cavs, and pretty much I just shot the breeze with Jalen Ramsey, and Nick Foles is dropping the good news at every moment he can with Jalen Ramsey in the locker room. And uh, I'm supposed to be the one in professional ministry, so (laughs) he's making me look bad over here. But Jalen's saying to the whole world, look, this guy is God-fearing. Whether he's injured or he's the Super Bowl MVP, he's God-fearing. And that can sound scary, that can sound totalitarian, but it has to do with what we've been talking about so far in this message. God then, in the book of Jeremiah, and to us today, He's just warning you. Any other path that you carve out for yourself, it's going to be about you. It's going to end up being fruitless. It's going to end up getting you evil habits in your life. He said, I've already established the good way, the good way. And to go this way, we have to listen to him. And so what he's saying is that fearing God is to listen and to follow God and only his direction. Do you hear it? Like he said, if this is the journey you want me to go on, God, then this is the only path for me. That's got to be the posture of our heart if we're going to listen to God 
and obey him no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, NFL player or not. Like he said, I became a better human being through this process. I didn't know this was going to be the case. I thought I was going to have this huge pedestal and everybody was going to listen to me and it was going to be easy because I was a Super Bowl MVP. And I made a comeback so big that everybody's going to lean in to hear what I have to say. But immediately, he's not the leader of the team when he goes there. And God still makes a way for him to impact people, to get to know the guys in the locker room even better than he would have had the opportunity to if the alternate reality was true, right? And what he means by I became a better human being is he's looking more like Jesus because he's giving himself over to God in his way. It's about living into the life of the obedient human being who more and more purely bears the image of God. I want to steal one last quote from this video. We're going to do this practice together as a church, as 11.45 a.m. service. Get out your phone or your bulletin or the notepad you brought or whatever you can take notes on. And we're going to steal this quote together and do a practice. He says, my purpose isn't football. It's impacting people for God. Ours is going to be, my purpose isn't fill in the blank it's connecting people to Jesus. As Hope Christian Church in, 2020, in 2019, almost 2020, that's what we're called to, just like Jeremiah, just like Nick Foles. My purpose isn't fill in the blank, it's connecting people to Jesus. And I trust that God is already letting you hear what those fill in the blanks might be. It might, it might be a long list. It doesn't have to be just one fill in the blank. You can make a whole list of what God is calling out from you. What are we tied to? What other paths are we trusting in besides his way? My purpose isn't fill in the blank. It's connecting people to Jesus. Do you hear it? Because whether we're exiled Israel like in Jeremiah or we are free citizens of the United States of America, called by God... You are to be the light to the nations. You are to be the light of the world to those around you. Romans 12.1 tells us to live as if we're living a, a living sacrifice, dedicating our lives to the authentic life with Jesus. And you can only do that by listening to God and obeying God and pursuing union with him and following him. Do you hear it? God says this to Jeremiah in chapter 7. But this command I gave them, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk in all the way that I command you and it may be well with you. But they did not obey or incline their ear but walked in their own counsels in the stubbornness of their evil hearts and went backward and not forward. And from the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt to this day, I have persistently sent all my servants, the prophets, to them day after day. Yet they did not listen to me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. So you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. And so we get two things from that. One, when we turn our ears from God, our loved one, we get the return on our investment. We get a poor relationship with Jesus. We get the fruit of our own devices. And Jeremiah here is being told, they won't even listen to you, but you continue steadfastly to listen to me and to follow me. Even if you're the only one, even if you're the only one in your workplace, even if you're, you're the only one in your family, even if you're the only one in your city, in your nation, follow me and listen to me. And after years of Jeremiah saying to this people, do you hear it, do you hear it, do you hear it? We find out how long he's been answering this call and living this out in Jeremiah chapter 25, starting at verse 3. For 23 years, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, to this day the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken persistently to you, but you have not listened. You have neither listened nor inclined your ears to hear, although the Lord persistently sent to you all his servants, the prophets, saying, turn now, every one of you, from his evil way and evil deeds, and dwell upon the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers from of old and forever. The ancient path has always been before you. 
I've already established the good way. And so the message has never changed over 23 years, and neither has the response. And our response has to change. Our posture has to change, or else we're going to be just like this, told we have stiffened necks, told we are trusting in our own counsels and our own stubbornness. And I don't want that, and I believe you don't want that. The path where the good way is has never changed. But today, we're fortunate. We know the name of this path, the way, the truth, and the life. His name is Jesus, right? We know the way, the truth, and the life. His name is Jesus. And he speaks in Matthew 13, 17, bridging all of this together to his followers in the New Testament. He says, for truly I say to you, Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see and did not see it. You sound like Jeremiah? And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And so here's the ancient path that will never change. Listen to what Jesus says. Listen to the way, the truth, and the life. This good way, this path, has always been before people to follow him. Listen to what Jesus says. Like Nick said in that video, when you listen to the word of God and understand it, it equips your heart to be who you are. Follow Jesus' life through the scriptures. The living scriptures tell us what Jesus' life and ministry was like, how good he was, how he loved, what his mercy looked like, how gracious he was, how he gave and how he lived as a living sacrifice. And we follow that. We listen to that. Do you hear it? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we do ask that you would reveal to us the counsels and the stubbornness that have been on us and that we would lay those down, that we would be free of those, God, and we would only choose your direction. God, if we're NFL players or anything else, that we would know that it's not about us, that it's not about the title that we have, it's not about the pursuits that we're going after, but living a life that connects people to Jesus is what this is about. Lord, I pray that you'd give us boldness to see that. Pray that that would be our only or at least top resolution in this year, God. And that everything else will be filtered through that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll have prayer partners up here for those who are mourning and want to mourn, that are sharing victory and praise. They'll share victory and praise with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace now, church, and we'll see you in 2020. I love you. <laughs>